It's your boy Nirgun in the house, back with another Arsenal news episode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today also we're going to talk about a lot of Arsenal news. Of course, uh, I've not been doing these kind of uh, episodes uh, as frequently as you wanted me to, or rather as I, as I was supposed to do it. Because there were no news at all, and probably it's because Arsenal were losing and I was not even paying attention to it, maybe. There is a certain sorts of relapse, or rather there are certain sorts of lapses from my end as well. So with that being said, I'm pretty much sure that I would want to change that and I would want to bring this, the news back again for you guys. So without any further ado, let's jump into the transfer news that we have here, or rather the news that you want that we have here. Of course, we're going to deal with Dominic Calvert-Lewin to Arsenal. Is it actually happening? Is it real? Because certain fans are really asking that on Twitter and of course there's an answer to it. And of course, the Aiden Hazard news has also been uh, in the in the news today. So if we are going to discuss that as well. So boom, let's the, let's hit the first news. So Foden Balogun has been nominated for the Premier League Two Player of the Month award. Yes, he is nominated for that award. You can see others, other youngsters as well. So Arsenal have retweeted that and uh, uh, you know uh, tagged Foden Balogun into into that retweet as well. So even Arsenal Academy tweeted out that congratulations for Ron Balligan for being nominated as the PL2 Player of the Month. That's crazy, isn't it? Moving on, uh, talking about also other stuff from Chris Wheatley who tweeted out that he understands that Thomas Partey's injury is not serious and he could be back for Sunday's match against Leeds United. Thomas Partey might be back for the Leeds United game. Let me know in the comments. Are you guys excited to see him? Um, you know what? The amount of injuries that he's had, it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of joke, but yeah, thank God it's not something serious. So we're going to talk about Aiden Hazard. Is he, is he coming to Arsenal? What is what is the hype around Aiden Hazard? Also, this video will uh, carry uh, the news about William Saliba. He, so, he said something controversial about Mikel Arteta, so stay tuned for that. Hazard says, uh, it's hard to admit it because of my relationship with Chelsea, but when I was a kid, I liked Arsenal. They had players like Perez, Wiltor and Vieira. Who I really liked and I grew up watching them so I really liked Arsenal and actually these quotes are from an interview that Eden Hazard gave to popular magazine on the front foot today so yes ladies and gentlemen Eden Hazard wanted to come to Arsenal but instead went for went to Chelsea from Lille so who cares moving on so William Saliba has yes is actually is actually hit out another swipe or rather take took a dig on Mikel Arteta and the certain comments are definitely a little bit of distasteful. I don't completely disagree with whatever William Saliba has to say here. So he says that uh, he's actually quite, um, he said to RMC that it is uh, clear that so much has changed in the last year. When I saw the coach, that the coach changed a lot, changed for me too. In this year there has been a lot of change. He judged me on two and a half matches. I would have liked for him to play me more, but he told me I wasn't ready. I was waiting for him to give me a chance, but football is like that. So that's the hype created. That there's something wrong that William Saliba said against Mikel Arteta. He's angry. Of course, he's frustrated that, you know, he always dreamed to play for Arsenal when he was a child. He comes to Arsenal, Arsenal buy him for some odd money. And at, at right now, he would want to play for the club. I mean, he's ready for to play for a bigger club, but he's upset. That he was judged only for me uh, on mere two and a half games that he's played, and you know that's not the kind of football. You know nothing went right at that moment of time, so he was sent back to France in in Nice. So there is no mention about what is actually the the emotional turmoil that he's actually going into, or rather, we Arsenal fans believe that you know what he's he's not performing well because because of um, a personal loss that we should not generally talk about. So yes, that was that. Moving on, let me let me let me know what do you guys think about William Saliba's situation. I would say it was unfair or that he was did not get a chance in the Premier League. Let alone the Premier League, he should have been definitely given chances in the Europa League group stages. Since we had some very easy opposition, but anyways, anyways, who am I to judge anymore? Moving on, so ex FIFA referee Mark Halsey fears horror horrific social media abuse will drive Mike Dean and other officials out of the game. He's not wrong in it. He says, actually, Dean has notified Merseyside police after he and his family were subjected to death threats. The 52-year-old, the 52-year-old has since asked not to be involved in the Premier League game this weekend. 
uh, Sun Sports ref expert Halsey revealed while abuse contributed to his retirement in 2013. And he fears Dean and more top flight refs could now follow. He says, Many officials, past and present, including myself, have suffered from horrific social media abuse. It's disgusting. In fact, the abuse I received was one of the factors in my decision to quit. It affects not just officials, it also hurts their families as well. And the likes of Mike and others may think, is this worth it? Social media platforms should be protecting people. Twitter, Instagram and Facebook must do more to police what is allowed to be aired publicly. I don't think they are doing enough. I'll tell you what, they can't. And they will not. It's just like that. But this, you know what the funniest funny story? Uh, Thomas Tuchek's red card has been revoked. He actually appealed against it and yeah, he's not getting any ban. I just thought, you know what, let's let let, let us let us know that as well. Moving on. So Reese Nelson needs more game time according to uh, former Arsenal striker Kevin Campbell. Well, the midfielder has struggled for game time this season and Campbell told a football insider a January move away would have done him a favor. He says Reese Nelson is still in and around the squad. And we have seen injuries happen and players having to come in and hit the ground running. He went on loan last season and done okay. So he's had a long spell of first team football. But I think he needs more football because he's not getting really getting a lot of football at Arsenal. It was an interesting one, the loan speculation, but it hasn't quite happened to him. Moving on. So, well, the Premier League have announced uh, that the latest round of COVID-19 testing yield just yielding just two positive test uh, results despite nearly 3,000 tests administered. 3,000 tests administered, only two positive results. That's actually a good news. A whopping 2,930 tests were administered to players and staff members from all uh, 20 clubs in, uh, in the week of Monday, Feb 1 to Sunday, Feb 7. And stunningly, only two positive results were returned. An official statement read, the Premier League can today confirm that between Monday 1st Feb and Sunday 7th Feb, across two rounds of testing, 2,970 players and club staff were tested for COVID-19. Of these, there, are, there were two new positive tests. Player or club staff who have tested positive will self-isolate for a period of 10 days. The Premier League is providing this ag aggregated information for the purposes of competition integrity and transparency. No specific details as to the clubs or individuals will be provided by the league and results will be made public on a weekly basis. Now, coming back to the Dominic Calvert-Lewin kind of uh, things that we actually have to deal with because uh, Football London's chief Arsenal reporter Chris Wheatley gave his thoughts on certain questions, the big talking points at the Emirates. So he had a Q&A with his fans on Monday. So one of the questions that he was asked was that, is there any, any chance of Odegar joining permanently or Dominic Calvert-Lewin joining? Is that a possibility? Chris Wheatley says, a decision will be made whether to pursue a permanent deal for Odegar once his loan spell ends. It's dependent on his performances over the next few months, but he has a good chance and looked bright when he came on against Villa on Saturday. Calvert Lewin is an excellent player, but Everton would command a huge fee for him. So I don't think that one is likely to happen anytime soon. So, anyways, also he was asked about Kieran Tierney. Now, big question. Even I have, even you as an Arsenal fan would have had, that how long is Kieran Tierney out for? Like, seriously, like, how much time is he going to take? So, Chris Wheatley said, Tierney has a leg injury, not related to the calf issue previously reported, which is down to fatigue. He's played a lot of games, and he needed a rest, and is hopeful of being back for the Leeds United game. Also, he was asked, is there any chance of my, Mark Ohomas coming back to Arsenal as a board member, or even as a technical director? Chris says, Unlikely at this stage, Edu is technical director, Richard Garlic is coming in as a head of operations and Vinay Venkatesham is chief executives. There are no plans to add anyone else as far as I know. Also, there was a very bizarre question says, uh, the question was that, is it true Mikel Arteta is in line or in talks for a new contract at Arsenal? Chris says, haven't heard that and would be surprised if it was the case at this point in the season. However, Cronky Sports and Entertainment have full faith in him and there are, there are no plans to make changes to the coaching staff as things stand. Also, there was a question about Dinos Konstantinos Mavropanos. Now, he was asked, does Mikel Arteta follow Mavropanos' development in the Bundesliga that he's playing for Stuttgart, I guess. So, Chris says, absolutely, Arsenal are keeping tabs on the progress of Mavropanos at Stuttgart. 
He had surgery on a meniscus a couple of months ago, but he's back now and looking promising. He should get a chance to impress the manager when he returns for pre-season training in the summer. So Dinos Mavropanos, well actually Dinos Mavropanos is actually having a very good time with Stuttgart. I hope things go perfect, perfect, that's what I want, a perfect things around. So with this we end this episode, thank you so much for tuning in guys, yes, with this we talk about what we have to and we will definitely let you know about anything new happening at Arsenal. So next episode will be really awesome about the new stuff, so stay tuned for that and yes, I will see you in the next one. Cheers. And consider subscribing. I keep forgetting that. Cheers.